Welcome to Heaven Awaits. My name is Lee, and I narrate the near-death experiences of those who have died and have seen the other side. If you enjoy these videos, please consider hitting the thumbs up, subscribe, and bell icons to be notified of new content. Doing so is free, and it does help the channel grow. Today's experience was emailed into the channel by Jim Martz. He gave me more identifying information. However, I am going to exclude that. Jim did not have an NDE. What he had was a spiritually transformative experience. Get comfortable, grab a cup of coffee or tea, and let's dive into today's experience. I was 18 years old when I had my encounter with Jesus. My story goes as follows. I was a troubled kid. I loved my dad, but my mom and I were like oil and water. At the age of 16, I ran away from home twice. Each time, my mom threatened to call the police on me. I lived in a home where I was told at an early age that I was to be seen and not heard. Living in a home with two other brothers and two sisters, plus mom and dad, made for a full house. I spent much of my teenage years in my room listening to my music. I found the lyrics useful as a teen. My younger sister was my mom's pet. If she did something wrong, my sister would blame me, and my mom would gear up for a butt whipping. Mine. I would explain that I didn't do it, or that it wasn't my fault, but mom didn't care. The beatings began. This went on from a very young age until I moved out and got my own place. My dad was my savior. After mom beat me, I would run to dad. He would always protect me from more abuse. This is where my dad and I became very close. Over the next couple of years when I was 18 years old, my mom and I fought and things turned ugly. My mom even called the local recruiting office. One day, a knock came to the door. My dad answered it and said, it's for you. Whatever you decide, I'll back you 100%. I said, who is it? I went to the door. It was the military recruiter. Needless to say, I didn't join. This is where things turned badly between me and my mom. She wanted me to pay rent in a home I grew up in. I told her if I'm paying rent, I'm getting my own place with my own rules. I left home and moved in with a buddy of mine, staying with his mom and dad until I saved enough money to get my own place. This was a terrible time in my life. My dad had had triple bypass surgery a few years prior. Things heated up at home while I was living with my friend. One day, my older brother came to my friend's house. I was outside with my friend and his dad when my brother pulled up and called me out into the street. I went to him, and he hit me so hard that when my head snapped back, I saw blood whiplash back across my face. He yelled, You're killing dad! I was on my back in the street, bleeding. My friend's dad ran down, picked me up, and asked if I wanted to file charges on my brother. I said yes, then changed my mind. Instead, I headed home to confront my mom and dad about the beating and who sent him to beat me. I was pissed off, Deluxe. I yelled at my mom and dad, grabbed more of my things and stormed out. Two weeks went by. My other brother came to my friend's house, banging on the door. I was in bed and heard him say loudly, Where's Jim? I came out of the bedroom ready to fight when my brother grabbed me, hugged me, and said, Dad's dead. This still gets to me. I was in shock. I couldn't believe it. My brother and I went to see mom at our house. I was in a fog. I was crushed. I never got to apologize to dad for yelling at him, and now he's dead, and I have to live with this until I die. My friend's dad drove me to the funeral home to see dad. After we visited dad, I asked if I could be alone with him for a few moments. Sure, my friend's dad said. Take your time. Now only two people know this my wife and mom. At the funeral home, I apologized to dad, took my house key off the ring, put it in dad's jacket pocket and said, Dad, I miss you, and I love you. Please come home. I decided to move back in with my mom so she wouldn't be alone. It didn't matter. Two weeks after my dad died, she wanted to go on a date. Oh hell, I said. Mom, his body isn't even cold yet. This is where things got worse for me. The guilt and sorrow were tremendous. I carried this guilt. It weighed heavily, extremely heavily. I'm so sorry, Dad. I carried this guilt for an entire year. Now this is where my encounter happened with Jesus. I was at home. My mom was gone. I was home alone. 
laying on the couch in the den with the kitchen facing in front of me. I was in a deep depression laying there when I noticed the kitchen light got brighter and brighter, and then a golden light emerged. I sat up, looked at the kitchen, and I grabbed my leg with my hand and squeezed it hard to leave a mark so I knew this was real. I looked at the light. It was a brilliant gold pulsating with different lines that shot out. I walked into the kitchen and stood there. The light was nothing more than unconditional love flowing from it. It was amazing. I felt the love go completely through my body. It was the best feeling I ever felt. I needed this unconditional love, something I hadn't felt in years. This light was pulsing love, shooting throughout my body, engulfing me in it. Then, a figure emerged, a tall figure in white standing in the gold light, looking at me. I immediately felt unworthy and dropped to my knees, and I begged for forgiveness. I am so sorry, Dad. Please forgive me. I pleaded. I knew I was standing before the greatness of the divine. Again, I begged for forgiveness. I wanted to go into the light with him, this unconditional love I craved, and wanted nothing else but to be with him in this light. While I was on my knees feeling unworthy and shattered by guilt, Jesus looked at me and said one thing, and I quote, You will never truly be happy unless you forgive yourself. Then I looked at him as he slowly backed into the light and disappeared as the golden light faded. I felt the unconditional love fade away with him. Don't go, I shouted. I want to go with you. I begged and pleaded with him to take me with him. As the light finally faded out, the kitchen slowly started to return to the dull lighting again. He was gone. Years later, after my kids were raised and moved away from home, my wife and I sold our house and bought another home at Grand Lake in Oklahoma. I'm retired now. I had a triple bypass like my dad, so I feel what he felt with his heart. We live next to the lake. It's very quiet and peaceful here. All my life, I wanted nothing more than to be happy. I did, however, finally forgive myself decades later, sitting on my porch swing on the back deck. I realized and remembered what Jesus said to me. You will never truly be happy unless you forgive yourself. And I again realized I did forgive myself, and I am truly happy. Now I just miss my dad dearly. Every day and night, I kiss my fingers and place them on my dad's picture in his shadow box and tell him, Love you, Dad. Good morning. And I love you, Dad. Good night. I love you and miss you. I do this every day and will continue to do so as long as God allows me to. I found peace and happiness in a quiet part of Oklahoma with just my wife and I, and I have my Father in Heaven to thank for saving me. That's my story. No near death, just a troubled kid that God saved. Stay blessed, and please find peace, love, and happiness. I hope this will let your viewers know God is with us always. He saw my sorrow and gave me a hand. You don't have to have a near-death experience to know God is real. He's watching all of us right now, maybe even smiling at me for sharing this on your channel so millions can see and hear. God bless you all. Note from Lee. I know that I rarely ever add these any longer, but this time I felt it was needed. As I told Jim in my email reply to him, I believe that Jesus does appear to us in our times of need. He appeared to Jim to help him get over his guilt. Jim, thank you again for sharing this. I know it wasn't easy. Enough of me inserting my two cents. That does it for this experience. As always, let me know what you thought in the comment section below. Until next time, stay safe and continue to be blessed.